Hello everyone, today we are going to talk about lecture number uh, 14 uh, and the num number 3 in tunnels. We are going to talk about uh, two different uh, tunnels today, two d two d models for tunnels today. The first tunnel we are going to model as we can see here in this um, uh, picture. Uh, in this slide we can see we have three different layers, silty sand, wizard rock, and rock class 2 and the size of the model 160 and 60 meters in this direction and the to, uh, bottom layer and the tunnel in the rock class 2 and that's 52 meters and the other two layers are for 4 meters we can see here that the tunnel is uh, a crown uh, rock bolt this is the crown rock bolt and this is inverted rock bolt and this is inverted shot crete as we can see here and this is the crown shot crete so the tunnel here is consists of four main component uh, the tunnel body itself and uh, inverted uh, shot crete here and the crown crete the blue one and this is the crown rock bolt and this is the invert uh, rock bolt uh, then the material will be used here is the material model will be more column material model for the silty sand and the wizard soil silty sand and the wizard soil and rock class 2 uh, and rock class uh, 2 1 and rock class 2 3 and rock class 2 4 so the purpose behind this tutorial we will start to study the effect of uh, the effect of the change in uh, value the value of k node between 1 1.5 2 uh, so we are, are going to make like a parametric study to see the effect of changing the value of lateral air pressure at rest here on the tunnel construction stage so we in this rock we are creating four different kind of rock and they are all the same as we can see but the only difference here is the change in the value of the k node so the value of the k node for model rock 2 1 is 0 0.5 for 0 point for 2 2 1 uh, 2 3 1.5 and for rock class 2 4 it's gonna be 2 but the rest of the material uh, properties are the same here we can see this is the material and uh, for the soft shot crete and hard shot crete and this is the rock poles so here the soft shot crete it will be the uh, it will be 0.5 e7 here 1.5 e7 the stiffness for the hard shot crete it's higher and they share the same parameters for the unit weight and the Poisson ratio for the uh, property uh, uh, section we are going to define the soil material as 2d parameter plan uh, plan strain and for the part of the soft shot crete we are going to define it as 1d and beam element and soft shot crete and uh, the section will be rectangular uh, section and H will be uh, 12 centimeters and B will be 1 meter. And say here for the rectangular part for the hard shot crete it will be the same and for the rock part because it's a plan strain of course we know that the section will be extended 1 meter in the direction perpendicular to your screen. For the rock bolt, we are going to model it as 1D truss element and the spacing will be 1.5 meter. We have to define here the spacing because we are dealing with 2D model. So it's very important to define, uh, to define that. Uh, now uh, we will go here, k node method. So, as I said, the purpose of this tutorial is to study the effect of the K-Node method and with different rock material. The K-Node method used the constant K-Node to calculate the horizontal stress from the vertical stress and set it as in situ stress. To use this method, the vertical stress sigma v 
need to be calculated first using self weight then value uh, is further used to calculate the horizontal stress sigma uh, h so the purpose of this slide if you remember when we started this course we said usually when we go to the analysis part usually we choose like if we went here and we choose a new model and this model we will choose it as 2d and I will just jump to the analysis part and I will say go to analysis usually when we go to analysis and construction stages usually if we came here we find that we have to define the initial stage for uh, stress analysis and we choose the initial stage then we apply k node condition today we are going to understand what is k node condition so we will talk about this more when we get to uh, this point of analysis the difference between k node and self weight and we will talk about it explicitly now we will go to the software we will open AutoCAD and so this will be our model I already uh, prepared the file here so we will start to import this file to the uh, to the to the software and it consists of three layer as we can see uh, the distance here is 160 meter and here the distance is like this and those are 4 meter thing 4 meter for this so this is our model and I will start to import it to our software so I will go here and I will start to import from my DAS GTS and X2D and I will start to import my problem as we can see here I say apply cancel so I will just come at intersect here I will choose everything I will say apply cancel so if we came here for example we will check our model it's one line we can check if we have like a small element or something so we go to face edges here and we go here to check manual so I will ask him to check the element less than 0.01 and I choose all everything here and I say find and I say repair uh, and I say uh, find like again check everything listen always if one find and I say okay so now I already have everything here now I will leave this and I will go to check my material to go to mesh here and to in, uh, input up my material isotropic I will start with more coulomb and silty sand layer for the silty sand layer as we can see here from this uh, from this one the silty sand layer 2 2 e 4 0.35 18 18 or actually here it's 19 if we have a water table 0.5 drained and we can't add the C0 you have to revise the previous lecture this will be 13 why we didn't include it less than 0.2 and dilancy angle will be zero 
and we can say apply next layer will be wizard soil and we say here it's 2e5 we adjust 0 and for the Poisson ratio 0.33 and this will be uh, 2 1 for the boris here it's uh, 2 2 and 0 0.5 non linearity here is this 30 and this is 33 this will be 3 apply general here we go to rock class 201 so for this we say this is 1 e7 Poisson ratio is 0.22 26 for gamma 27 for this one and for non-linearity it's 334 47 43 this will be 13 and we say apply 2 2 here it's different we have to define this manually this will be 1 and we say apply then this we can make this one 1.5 and we say this is 3 apply this is 4 we can make this 2 and we say apply cancel and we just come here to modify this one and make it 0 0.5 and we say okay now we go to isotropic elastic and we start to define this material so this material will be soft shotcrete and we need this to be 5e7 Two four for the hardening one it is the same but this one will one point five is seven and we say okay and for the steel we're gonna add this two point one e eight and Poisson ratio will be 0 0.3 and gamma will be 7, 8, 7, 8 and material will be steel and we say ok, cancel, cancel we go to property and we create, uh, sorry, we create 2D plan strain and we say silty sand wizard rock rock class 2 1 2 2 2 2 2 2 2 concrete here it will be 1d element beam we call it soft shot crete soft shot crete and we add the section rectangular 0.12 and since it's plan strain it will be extended for one meter in this direction for hard 
it will be the same section and we say apply for the rock pulse it's trust element rock pulse trust element and the material is steel and it's a spacing h1.5 meter and the section is going to be solid round and it will be 0 to 5 then okay close so now we already created our material so i just want to show you something very fast if we choose the truss here since we already defined the thickness it will start to give you the cross section area the torsional constant and the torsional coefficient because it's a truss element so all we need is the cross section area this is what is very important but if we went to back to the beam element we'll start to see this is the area this is a torsion constant this is the moment of inertia in y direction and z direction this is the effective shear and the effective shear area in both direction and this is the shear coefficient and uh, or radius of gyration in uh, uh, y direction and z direction now i will go back here to geometry i will save my model i will save it here and say save now i will go here I will go here to mesh and control size 0.8 I will choose this areas here and I say apply then I will start to mesh the rest of the other parts so i am going to go here and make polyline now i will go to mesh 2d every time we use auto face uh, for mesh no this time i will use something called auto area i will go to choose everything here and i will make the size 8 meters and I will check mesh in our domain so if so he can check this area too and we just say apply so now we already meshed everything and it's all connected as we can see now with no problem if we went back here to the mesh we will start to see this is the invert part and so again this is the invert and this is the crown and this is a silty sand layer this is a weathering soil and this is the rock layer rock sorry this is the rock soft rock and this will be the weathering soil So my answer is organized now I save as we can see here so for or at the beginning we'll go here to parameter and I will choose to the I will choose this one and I assign it to weathering apply I'm choosing the soft rock and assign it to rock first one and I'm choosing the crown and the invert and I assign them here too 
and for the 30 cent I assign it to 30 cent close now I show it by property as I can see here this is our model so I take everything now and I will start to mesh uh, 1D element now I will go to extract so I will show my meshing here I will go to extract here and I will start to choose from edge and I will start to choose here and here and say this is a invert rock pulse and we say apply and we choose those and we say crown rock pulse and we have to create here another material for the soft here I will go here and I will copy this one soft here and we will say this is soft close extract again at the beginning here we choose this element here and we say this is the invert shot crit apply and This is the crown shot create and say apply cancel I hide everything now so this is my crown and this is my model I save now I will just come here and I will show the invert and the rock pulse here element and I will start to show their local coordinate system and we can see they are not matching together so we have to match them together so I will go here to parameter again but this time 1D and I will start to change the coordinate system so I will change the coordinate system here I will start to choose the element here like this And we say here reverse and we say apply. So, as we can see now, it's very nice and organized. Now, I go with this one. but let's not be confused I will hide those and I will come here and I will choose this element here uh, 
and I say reverse and now they are organized as we can see here now we already created this we hide our model coordinate system now we can start with our boundary condition so we go to analysis first thing we create gravity load then we go to auto constraints auto and we call this ground we say apply and finally we go to change properties so for rock to to we select rock layer or soft rock layer and we say apply we make it rock to three and we select soft rock layer and say apply finally rock four four we select soft rock layer and we say apply here we go back to hard shot create so we select the invert shot create hard crown and we'll call it crown shot create hard cancel and now we created our model now we can go to construction stages and we start to add first one initial stage at this stage we add we say active we add the soil we add the crown we add the invert clear displacement ground gravity save new now I will start to go back to my presentation to look at very important thing do you remember when we started to talk about the method of solution for the initial condition? Uh, we have two methods. The first method is called K-node method. The second method is called gravity or self-weight analysis method. So when we use H1, we use uh, the K-node method uh, if the, the ground level is horizontal. But if the ground level is uh, uh, inclined, we can't use the uh, k newt method we have to go to the other method except to do some modification so what is k node method the k node method uses the constant k node which is the at rest air pressure to calculate the horizontal stresses from the vertical stresses and set it in as the in situ stress so we can calculate uh, first thing we calculate the vertical stress in finite element then to calculate the lateral stresses from the vertical stresses we use the k node to calculate this to use this method the vertical stresses sigma v needed to be calculated first using the self weight and this value is further used to calculate the horizontal uh, stresses through uh, sigma h which is the horizontal stresses equal k node multiplied by sigma v the vertical st uh, stresses in the case of inclined the shear stress is assumed to be zero this is the first case uh, if we are using the k node method we assume that the shear stresses is uh, is zero if the ground surface is not flat the calculated stress, uh, calculated stresses, state and self weight is not in equilibrium. So, 
When the ground surface is not flat and the K-node method is used to calculate initial stress, the analysis must be performed by using unbalanced forces between the resistant forces according to the self-weight and the initial stresses condition in order to make an equilibrium condition. In order to achieve this kind of equilibrium because of using the K-node method, uh, we can uh, do a null stage which will uh, has uh, which none of the condition is changed uh, in the first one when we calculate the stability uh, or the equilibrium we will not reach the equilibrium then the null case will be will be used to reach the equilibrium so we have to set uh, a null uh, stage after the initial stage and we have to set the displacement to zero the other solution for this problem is to use and uh, uh, don't check this and use self weight analysis method. If the ground surface is flat, this method is the same as K node equal uh, Poisson ratio over one minus Poisson ratio of K node method. But if it's not, so if we are the uh, the K, uh, if the if the surface is flat, so it calculate the lateral stresses from the uh, uh, lateral uh, stresses from the vertical stresses and calculate K node using uh, new over one minus new Jack uh, Jack equation. But if it's not, the result comes out differently with the K node method because the horizontal displacement and the shear stress occur. In the other method, we said there is no shear stress, but here there is shear stress. Therefore, uh, generally, it's recommended to use self-weight analysis method if the ground surface is not flat, like the case we are using now. In this case, the K-node value can't be set over 1. You must uh, use K-node method to use K-node value over 1. Since we are going to do some parametric study here, uh, we can use the area method as long as the value, because it's impossible to reach one uh, here through this equation. So, if we want to calculate k node or to include k node larger than one, we go to the k node. In our case or in our problem, we have to go to calculate k node from uh, use uh, k node method because we are considering values for k node larger than one. So we go to the software now and we go to this condition and we call it null and we do nothing but we just declare the displacement and we say new. At this case, we will start to excavate crown. To excavate the crown, we go to the crown and we take it off like this and we say save. New. We say install element. Install rock poles and other element. So at this case, sorry, we excavate this and we install crown, uh, rock poles and crown uh, short crate and we say save. In the next one, we uh, use uh, short crate hard. So we go to short crate and we change the boundary condition here to shot crete, uh, sorry, crown shot crete hard and we say save. Then we go to new and we start to excavate the invert. And we install the invert and the other one. And we say save and in the last one, new here, we add the invert should create and we say save and close. We copy this three times and we say modify. In this case, we use in the initial condition, we use rock 2. 
here we use rock 3 here we use rock 4 cancel but there is an important thing we forgot to do here in the case when we start to add to excavate the crown since our problem will go back to the presentation and see during the uh, during the tunnel excavation a 3d uh, structure is performed around the tunneling shield therefore the load transfer phenomena which is the arching effect which happen in the soil towards the longitudinal and transverse direction occur this arching effect occurred in two or more uh, planes will scatter the ground load into three dimension way we are solving our problem it's supposed to be in three dimension because the load distribution is 3d but since we are solving a 2d problem we have to do some modification or some arrangement for the load or excavation uh, how to include it uh, how to like present it to the software so the displacement also occur around the tunnel and the entire shield to consider this effect in numerical analysis the 3d finite element analysis must be directly performed but we are solving 2d analysis however from the result of recent document and researcher in the literature they started to demonstrate that the effect of the 3d dimension tunnel process can be reflected in two dimensions therefore the general application of the shield process and 3d ground behavior generated by supporting installation are modeled by a uh, load distribution factor so we will add this uh, load or excavation on load distribution factor so the load distribution factor postpones the tunnel excavation effect by dividing the load and apply part of the load into stages after excavation stage. The load in each dis uh, distribution stage is defined by factor ratio from 0 to 1 and the submission will be 1 at the end. To present this to the software, we go here and we go to load distribution factor and we consider it in three steps and we say add or we consider it like this and we say okay save close so we will go to each one of these and we will consider this save close and here again save close finally here save close and we go here to analysis case so for run first run now we consider k node condition sorry construction stages we consider k node condition now apply to Four and we say apply. So this is our first cases, and I will start to run my analysis and we can start to view the results so as we can see this is the runs of the of each analysis we don't have any problem in our runs now we can start to view the results so we will look from first one at the total displacement we'll see it undeformed and we can see here auto and we can see the maximum and the minimum displacement and we can see here the lateral displacement and y and this is the vertical displacement this is the lateral displacement we can look here at the stresses too so we can look at the 
stress this uh, concentration here like we can see that stresses are concentrated around uh, around uh, the tunnel if we take prop here and we see this value and this value we can see that here it's very high around around the tunnel and we can view here the plastic strains we can choose the plastic points so there is no points reached the yield here and the most interesting thing here is that if we went here to get extract here extract and we went to get this point for example the displacement in y direction and uh, we get it from the first run and we set table here so we can get here this values we say excel for example we will open excel to analyze our results so this is the first value then from 2 I will get that value 2 and 3 I will get y value from 4 last run and we can get ty table for the same node and I can start to draw here general And we can say these are the different cases two, three, four, five, six. And we say let's draw this. So now we can see the effect of K node, the difference in K node here. So this is uh, when the K node is very high. This is uh, displacement when the k-node is less. So we can see that every time k-node is higher, it gives me uh, more displacement. We can look at the lateral displacement at each point. So this is the first one. This is the second one. Third one. And finally the fourth one. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, and we start to draw this. As we can see, there is a big difference here in the result. So, here we can start to study the effect of K node on our settlement and it's obvious that it's affecting our results so you can do a lot of parametric study this way here you can also uh, 
look at the moment and shear in our problem if we came here and we went to plane forces and bending moment in y direction in the crown and the invert yeah that's correct shot crete as we can see this is the moment shape and it's very logic here we can see the shear force in z direction we can see the axial forces here and we can manage the, this, uh, the visualization of the result it's very easy to manage the visualization of the result and finally we can look at the thrust element here throw the result of the thrust axial force we can see the axial force in the element and we can start to design them so this is one of the model and we already learned many stuff in this uh, tutorial we'll start to look at different kind of tunnels right now which is if we look to here we, uh, we will look at the lining tunnel this is a different kind of tunnels we will start to able to design this we'll start to assume the lining thickness and model uh, for the modeling then we'll start to analyze it we'll review the allowable stress in the lining and if it's allowable stress in the allowable uh, we then we say the analysis is complete but if it's uh, if the uh, reviewing and if it's not we will assume the quantity of steel reinforcement we will start to add this and we will go to strength design and tell strength design until it's an allowable uh, values and we go finally to complete so in general uh, when we work with design we will start with assuming sections assuming strengths assuming everything and we check them if they are safe and in the allowable tolerance we uh, according to the code we say this design is safe if not we go to uh, see what we can do like uh, a steer reinforcement and check the uh, structure design for this problem we will use uh, uh, this kind of tunnel we will look at it now the soil property uh, we have here this is the tunnel we will uh, simulate and we use springs for it we will see this right now so as we can see here the height of the soil above the tunnel will be 3 meters so the unit weight will of the gamma will be 20 meters the internal friction is 30 degrees and the cohesion or at air pressure uh, 1 minus 5 will be half for the concrete this is the design uh, this is the strength of the concrete this is the unit weight and this is the elastic modulus for the tunnel shape it will be three center tunnel r1 r2 this is the angle this is the angle we know how to do this and its length is 14 meter so in general this is uh, an overview about what, uh, our tunnel and this is uh, this is the shape this is the radius the first radius and uh, this is our coordinate so we can draw it simply and this is the air separation comes from the side this is the air separation comes from the side as we can see they are identical we can calculate this air separation as uh, so easy this is three meters uh, three meters of soil and uh, so the letter is so the vertical stresses will be 3 by 30 it will be 60 and to get the lateral air pressure we uh, or the horizontal one we multiply the vertical stress by uh, k node since the k node is half so it's gonna be 30 and this apply for this one too for this value is the same from both sides so 
again how we got this number we already have this height is 3 meters the gamma of soil is 20 so that means that vertical stress at this point is uh, 60 kilonewton per meter square and to get the horizontal stress we multiply the vertical stress by k node so we can get the horizontal so 60 uh, multiplied uh, to half or 0.5 will equal 30 so this value will be the same you have the height until this uh, point this is zero and zero and you can get you can get this height and uh, plus three you multiply it by 20 and then you multiply it by half you can get this value uh, for the name of the material C27 uh, this is the strength of the concrete it's isotropic material elastic models of elasticity Poisson ratio and this is the value of uh, unit weight and uh, for the other material for the lining for the property it's 1D and the model will be beam material and we'll take the material from here beam element and no spacing and the section will be rectangular and this is the section properties uh, for calculating the subgrade reaction for the springs as I said this uh, this uh, tunnel will be uh, supported on the springs so to calculate the springs parameter the subgrade reaction in the vertical direction at the tunnel bottom is can calculate according uh, according to the subgrade reaction calculation formula of the high bridge design code so kv node equal 1 over 30 alpha e node which equal they assume alpha equal 1 and e node uh, is 1040 so we can get kv node bv is equal a square root of av so what is av av is 800 by the value of e so we can get e so e node equal uh, to uh, uh, 28 newton uh, by this value so we can calculate eventually kv is equal kv node uh, bv over 30 so we can calculate as end this is the value of the uh, subgrade so now i will go back to the software i will start a new uh, model sorry i will start a new model 2d model i say okay I'm going to close this one so I will start with creating a geometry and I will go to the tunnel part uh, tunnel part here and I will go back to the presentation here and I see the first the first one is uh, uh, radius is 4.665 4.665 the angle is 60 and the other one is 3 meters by 60 so this is the tunnel and I say apply so this is my tunnel I say save save my problem now I will go to material here and I will start to see isotropic material elastic and it will be uh, C27 I go back here and I will start to add it 2.7 E7 2.7 E7 Poisson ratio 0 0.18 gamma will be 25 here will be 25 and I say okay for the property here I will get 1d beam element it will be lining and I will go to section it will be concrete section and uh, rectangular 0.4 by 1 0.4 and here is 1 and say okay and we have only one material okay close close now I will go to 1d 
meshing I choose this crown and I will tell the program divided by 20 meet by 20 element so and I will choose it as crown and say apply for here the rest of the geometry here and I'm calling this floor and we say apply and for the rest of the geometry here I will tell him to divide it by 8 and we call we can like make it 1 this we will call this right side and finally we call this left side and now we already have our crown and show by material or property as we can see here now we go to show the uh, the axis I will go to parameter here to arrange everything to move together 1d change the coordinate system here and I ask him to reverse it and I say apply now it looks okay so this is the number of the element and the number of the nodes I will arrange them now so now I will go to renumbering so we can arrange this numbering we can see they are not matching together so I will go to renumber here I will say user like x then y I will say nodes for example let me show nodes 2 and I will check everything here and I will say apply and for element I say apply so we already can see that they are arranged so now we already num uh, numbered everything we go here to analysis we just add gravity loot say cancel so now I will start to add the loot it will be add loot on beam so we will go here to um, loads beam loot so we will start to choose select first node it will be this is the first node select second node this is the second node and we can start to as the first load will be 30 the second load will be 83.325 one this is zero sorry we can say apply so we see if we have any load here it already exists but it's in the wrong direction so we're deleting this anyway so we'll go back again here to beam load we put it in the uh, horizontal left load from 0 to 130 83.325 first node second node and it's uh, in global x direction so we can say apply 
cancel again it's not correct we delete it we we'll go again here last time here we'll add it on element so we are going to select first node last node because here it will start to go back again select element this is the element here and it's gonna be an global x and 0 to 1 30 it's 3.325 this is uh, left horizontal earth pressure yeah correct apply here first point second point element and we say right we say is correct and say apply cancel now we will start to add the vertical one so this will be instead of horizontal left we will add it vertical 12 0 to 1 from 60 if we still remember from 60 here and until 136 and its pressure and global y direction and we choose the first point last point and element as we can see here apply here this is the first this is the last and it is the same thing but we will call it right and we say apply cancel now we already added all our load now we go here to parameter 1d now I will go to create sorry not parameter and I will go to other to create the springs here I will create ground surface spring I will create um, surface spring its type is elastic and we will say this is elastic So again, create other uh, surface elastic. Spring. We add the number from here. Three one six one six. spring and we say the length of element is one meter it will be compression only we say surface spring is fine we say apply sorry it was asking us to choose element 
so this is the element as we can see here apply cancel now we already created this the final step here is to fix this point of the bridge uh, of the tunnel so we go here to constraints we go here we check tx at this point we call it lateral constraints show and we say apply and cancel finally we do some co uh, combination set here so we go for the loads so from combo set so here for combo combo one we will add here the gravity load and lift uh, horizontal lift vertical for the gravity here we will take it 1.45 for the lateral we will take it 1.8 for the vertical we will take it 1.4 and we say apply for combo 2 we will take it here gravity the same here we'll take it 0.9 but we will change it to the right side we'll change the here to the right side and we we'll say apply uh, cancel so this is the com uh, the combination of the load you can change this load according to the code you are using but mainly we are using this for this tutorial as i suggested here now we don't have to do in uh, analysis cases we will go here to solve it the type of the analysis will be nonlinear static we'll call it run and we will do here add all the meshing here we add all of the parameter we add combo 1 combo 2 and if we look here we'll say uh, solve each load set independently i say okay and i start to run my problem and i say okay here is to run my analysis so as we can see the analysis has been run for combo 1 and combo 2 we can start to see the total displacement we show the minimum and the maximum so we can see here this is the maximum uh, deformation this is for the loading in the left direction we can see the loading comes from this uh, side if we went to combo number two we can see it's inverted to the other side you can see this is the lateral one as we can see it's fixed at this point because this is what we did and this is the lateral displacement we can look here at the springs force in y direction and we can look here at in x direction in x direction we can look here at the beam forces so the axial force as we can see here the axial force 716 we can see the shear the shear force in x direction and bending moment in y direction we can see it's a perfect shape for the bending moment uh, we can look here as well in the stresses for the spring and both cases for the case of for this is for the case loading first case loading this is the other case loading we can see the difference between two both of them so this is the moment for the lift when we lose the lift case this is the moment when we lose the right case it makes sense this is a displacement from the right case lift case and we can see that there is a lot of uh, results you can view from here so it doesn't matter how much like uh, we can already know how to define uh, to the analysis for lining and we can check stresses checking stresses here is very important for the beam element we go to check the axial stresses so it's here the maximum stress here is 2000 300 so if we went back to the presentation here we can see uh, 2000 and uh, so the design uh, or the critical strength here is less so our lining is uh, safe
sorry here it's one uh, one thousand six hundred uh, kilonewton meter square uh, this is uh, uh, so this is at different integration point this is for von Mises stress we can see here this is for von Mises stress it's 17 uh, 17,000 and uh, here it's uh, so it's still less than that we uh, to uh, 27,000 so our uh, our uh, our lining is safe and we can see the distribution here you can take this is from this case we can see the critical between the two cases we can see from the left case here the maximum will appear here 15,000 but when we load the right side you can see that the maximum will be here 17,000 you can view a lot of results here but, uh, and I will let you to see all the results see you in the next lecture next lecture will be very important we will start to talk about dynamic we'll make two models and we will run eigen uh, value uh, eigen analysis uh, and um, we'll look at the liquefaction so see you next lecture thank you and we will talk about a new material model the uh, modified uh, UBC sand so it will be a very big lecture very important so see you next lecture thank you